everybody welcome to another video so today we're having a little look at the uh, the DRAM now it has got a model number which is an SLS 718 but when it, whenever you see these things advertised it's just called a DRAM uh, that's D-R-A-M now these are effectively trying to mimic a Kiwami and an NS Iwasa Kiwami 4. Now, I did an unboxing video of this and uh, an Avalon that I bought at the same time. So I'll put a link in the description. goes into a bit more detail of the interchangeability of the, the various components. But concentrating on, on this gun, and I will put a link in the description as well. But one thing I will say is it's becoming evident that uh, this particular gun came from AliExpress. And I think that's probably the only place you'll be able to buy it from. D different countries and regions are excluded from getting different products. Uh, so in the UK, I know you can get this quite easily. I know you can get this in the US because I know a couple of people that have bought them already. You can get them, uh, as far as I know, in Australia, you can get them as well. But the price does vary. So I'll put a link in the description. You may be able to get them in your region. You may not. Uh, but if the link takes you through and then it, it disappears, it will come up with not available in your region. But anyway, at least you can see where I got it from. I paid around about 100 US dollars. I think it was about 98 in total. Um, there was some kind of offer on, but even now they're only about 107 US dollars. So they're not particularly expensive. Uh, as I say, these are styled on an NS Iwata Kaiwami 4 gun, but it, it's a Kaiwami 4. They do a WB and they do a WBX. Now, both the WB and the WBX are split tip guns. They have a, a three split tip or a tulip tip as it's often referred to. So what you'll get in here is effectively a... It's going to be mimicking a WBX or a WB, but it's actually not, because when you look at the, the cap, the, the holes are actually smaller than a WB or a WBX. Um, one of the guys that watches the channel was saying that he's just bought one, uh, and it, it, it looks very similar to an, an LV4, which is a, an NSI water cap. Um, those caps are designed to run at a lower pressure. Now, I found this would run at a lower pressure, but I got the best results from it at a higher pressure. Now, that would, that would be more in line with the WBX and the WB, which are designed... Well, the WB is designed to be used at 1.8 bar, which is... What's that, about 20... 27? No, uh, about 25 PSI, something like that. Uh, and the WBX is designed to be used at two bar, which is 2.9, uh, sorry, 29 PSI. So you can see that it, it, it's, if it's mimicking those guns, and as I say, the cap is different, uh, then it needs a higher pressure. And I found that it actually worked okay, very well at a higher pressure. So initially, again, with this gun, one of the things I noticed immediately was the build quality. And, and the build quality of it actually looks quite good. Uh, it's heavier than the NSI water by about 50 grams. Uh, but you would probably expect that because it, it's... Um, most of these guns that are, are copies use slightly cheaper materials, certainly for the body. And I would think that's, that's probably where most of the, uh, the weight gain or saving in the case of the, the genuine iWater product. That's where most of the weight is saved in the body. But looking at all the controls, fit, finish, etc., it's actually very, very good. In fact, uh, as, as I was saying, I did a, an unboxing video with a Avalon uh, gun, and I think this actually seems better made compared to the two. Now, both, both of those guns are made in Taiwan, so this gun is actually made in Taiwan. Uh, again, going back to the unboxing video, somebody said to me, oh, there's, there's actually on the side of the box, there's three different caps that you can get. That, that 
could be interesting. I don't, I don't think these are often with any different caps. I wonder whether it's a generic box or something. I'm not sure. But when you actually look at the cap, there's no designated marking on it at all. It doesn't give you a model number of cap or a type of cap. All it does is just say DRAM, I think it's expert quality, something like that. Um, it doesn't actually tell you what cap it is. So I suspect these are only available with one cap, and that's the cap I've got here. So those that uh, watch the channel will recognise this tank. I did this actually about a year and a half ago. I think a, a video went out about a year ago, something like that. But the, um, the, guy, the guy who owns it, I, did, I only did Mudguard and a tank for him at the, um, or nearly the same time. But the, the guy that owns it use, uses a magnetic tank bag, and I would avoid magnetic tank bags like the Plague, because if you put it down, it picks up little bits of metal, and then you put it back on, slap it back on the tank, it magnetises to it, and then any slight movement when you're putting stuff in it, particularly if you put heavier stuff in it, which is a good place to put heavier stuff, a tank bag, have the weight over the front rather than the back, unless you want to be wheeling everywhere. Um, but any slight movement starts to rub the tank, and it, 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 it rubbed the tank, and I tried to give it a, a light sand and the idea was the idea was to polish it out and i thought no in the end you know we might as well just give it another another coat of uh, base coat which is what we're doing with the gun now and then we'll give it a coat of clear coat so for base coat which is what we've just done i used 1.7 uh, bar which is about 23 psi 22 23 psi very happy at that Lays, ba lays base coat really really well I have used it on other things since and it, it, the a split tip really does help with base coat I think because it, it, just, incre it just increases the atomization so you get more finer particles and that's always good for base coat particularly more complex colours you'll see here where I'm cleaning the gun out what I normally do oh no, I must mention actually what somebody said which has been a really good idea what I normally do when I clean a gun if I'm using the same gun for base coat or clear coat I know a lot of purists would say you shouldn't do that and uh, you know I would agree with that but when you're testing one for both then that's what you do but what I I do is I put some 1k thinners so it's a uh, a cleaning thinners effectively and I call it 1k it's often referred to as, as just uh, standard cleaning thinners but most of those and in fact all of those will be reconstituted so they're they've been for a process of being reclaimed so they'll have little bits of impurities in there not not particles normally but just you can get problems if you use those with actu the actual paint so what i do is i run a uh, a couple of runs of cleaning thinners through it just to remove the the base coat and I know you're going, you're putting a clear lacquer over the existing base coat. But if, if you don't clean it out properly, sometimes you can get little, little patches of the clear that has picked up some of the base coat. And it does notice. Uh, it doesn't stick out like a sore, sore thumb, but it does notice. So I, I put a couple of um, just run throughs with, run through with cleaning thinners. And then I will put a final one with 2K thinners. And the 2K thinners then um, should take out any impurities. And what I do now with the 2K thinners, I actually put them in a little bottle. This is this little bottle I've got with a top on it. And that come about, as somebody said to me, uh, why are you putting all your thinners on a cloth? I normally just um, expelled it to a cloth so that it would just evaporate. Uh, you know, it saves having to put it anywhere. Uh, and, and he had a point actually and ever since then I've got that bottle next to it and any 2k thinners so um, good quality thinners I put into a little, little bottle and then I use it for cleaning so it just goes into my normal cleaning bottle and it does actually it does work and it does save a little bit of money uh, in, in, in thinners so yeah I mean at first I, I thought the bloke was um, picking holes is the wrong word but you know just uh some people like to have a pop about about things that don't really matter but it was actually a really good idea so i'm glad he i'm glad he did say it the clear coat we're just mixing up is a u-pulch clear coat it's not bad it's it's relatively cheap 
Uh, but it, it works quite well. I find it works quite well. And we're using a, an extra fast hardener in it. So I, I've been adding a little bit of thinners or a little re- bit of reducer to it. Normally about 10% maybe slightly less i always used to use it neat but i i have found that it, it does actually flow slightly better with uh, some thinners in it so i've been using it with thinners uh, quite a bit recently and normally the cold the colder weather i use it with thinners but this was only about 16 degrees celsius so it was it wasn't too bad for painting uh, temperature wise in the uk we get quite it's quite temperate so it's never really that warm never ideal painting conditions for most of the time you'll see something bouncing about on the screen uh, in a minute I, i'm not sure what it was i think it must but must have been a spider or something uh, attached to my head i didn't notice it at the time obviously you're concentrating on what you're doing but it, it does go out the picture but it is it is quite annoying that's it i think it's gone now um but you'll notice I'm going to put my clear coat in a microwave uh, and I do that with the base coat as well. I do mention this and I know I keep repeating it. So those that watch the videos a lot, I do apologize for repeating it. But obviously you get some people that will only watch one or two videos. I'm sure this isn't a safe thing to do. So I'm not for one minute saying that it's something you should do. But it is what something I do. Uh, and it's normally about as a rough guide i use 10 seconds per 100 milliliters of mixed clear coat so for a lot of the time what i do is i i put the lamp on just to get a little bit of a heat in heat into the object and then i'll put the clear coat into the uh, microwave and as i say i'll put it on for 20 seconds if it's 200 milliliters i think something like this takes just over 200 milliliters so it'll be on for about 20 seconds and it will take that clear coat up from a, in in this case about 15 degrees celsius which is the ambient temperature up to about 35 degrees celsius maybe slightly more now obviously if you've got a lot to do and you use an extra fast hardener you want to keep the temperature down a bit but it does definitely help it flow so that together with the thinners means that you can get a reasonably good finish um with a relatively cheap clear coat uh, with with these split tip guns again people who watch the video will notice that with these split tip guns whether they be this one the i waters the um prd the porpoise prd series guns with these split tip guns because they atomize finer i find that they, they're actually rewarded more or you are rewarded more and the gun is rewarded with a better quality clear coat but with this with this one i thought well i'll i'll you know it's the weather's reasonably pleasant so we'll try with the u-pole and it did very very well i mean i used it at two bars so the settings for a base co- uh, sorry for clear coat here were two bar pressure so 29 psi full fluid so the f- fluid was fully open all the split tip guns whether they be four split tip or three split tip as in the case with this gun all of them are quite slow uh the three tips are normally a bit faster than the four tips as you would probably expect because the the tulip tip does i'm not sure why but it does actually slow them down so none of these are particularly fast guns but you are rewarded with a very very good finish and this gun is absolutely no exception at all one of the one of the good points about this and again if you look at the unboxing video you'll see the difference in tips and the the actual air holes in the front of the tip not the cap the tip um are smaller than they are for some of the iwata guns and also, as we were talking about earlier, the, the holes in the cap are actually a bit smaller. The plus side of that means that this doesn't use lots of air. Uh, now, none of the none of the split tip guns are economical on air because they all have quite larger quite larger holes in the cap than you would find in, say, for example, a Bellaria or the original Kaiwami 4 which is being withdrawn at the moment I'm sure it will come back but the one with the um, uh, like bronze coloured controls and bronze coloured cap BA4J cap 
Um, that's got quite small air holes in it, so it's actually very, very economical. It uses about 7.5 CFM at two bar. This, I would guess, probably uses about 10.5 CFM at two bar, and that's as opposed to uh, a WBX, which uses about 12.5. So again, for, for somebody with a, a more modest setup, as far as a compressor goes, this would actually be very, very good because you are getting a glimpse of how these split tips work without too much uh, air consumption, even bearing in mind we are using it at a higher pressure. Bear in mind that a, a gun, the more pressure you put through a gun, the higher the air consumption will be. One of the things I also noted on my notes, I make notes when I uh, do these videos, just so that it, you know, it brings back anything that I'm thinking at the time, was there was a reasonable amount of overspray with this. Um, and looking on the camera, it doesn't really come across as being... Uh, the overspray being too high but I, I, I remember noting at the time that it had a reason you know uh, it wasn't particularly low on overspray which some of these guns can be but normally if you've got a uh, use a lower pressure this is capable of um, as I said before this is capable of being run at a lower pressure so you could keep the overspray down but it doesn't quite give as good a finish but I mean the actual finish of base coat and for clear coat on this is is superb um so i think i think we've found here uh it's certainly a very very good value for money gun longevity i don't know at the moment i mean it could be a, a fact that in three months time all the seals start leaking i really don't know i would be surprised because the taiwanese gun guns are normally quite well made uh, so I would be surprised if that is the case. But obviously I don't know. I can't say to you for sure that uh, these things are going to last for uh, years and years. But certainly for the amount, the amount of outlay on these uh, and the results you can get with them, um, excellent value for money. Excellent, excellent value for money. Highly recommended. I'm trying to get as close here so that you can see. It's not a particular colour that that pops out and you think oh yeah look at the finish of that because it just it's just not that sort of color <clears throat> but i think if, if you have a look you can see that uh there's very little orange peel with this you, you'll never get zero orange peel but it's very 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 little and i'm try trying to get as close to the uh, tank as possible so that you can get an idea of the sort of finish but i was very very impressed with this i've no problem whatsoever recommending it to uh, to people and for effectively a hundred us dollars it is definitely better than something like the the astro guns um whether it's made as well i really don't know it, i think it's probably on a par but with the astro guns i do know people that have had those for quite a few years and they last very very well again they're a taiwanese gun which is why i mentioned them really and they're also in a similar sort of price range to this so uh but yeah definitely definitely worth uh keeping a look out and you know if you fancy getting something a little bit different highly highly recommended i'm certainly glad i got it uh, and I'm sure I'm sure it's going to last re reasonably well. None of my guns get a load of use these days because I have so many of them. People will know that I've obviously got some kind of psychological problem because nobody in their right mind needs as many spray guns as I've got. But ne as I've said before, need and want is often, often uh, a different thing. Anyway, guys, we're getting near the end of the video now. So I just want to say thanks for watching it really is appreciated i do genuinely enjoy making the videos and hopefully that, that comes through that uh you know i'm not just going through the process of it i do i do genuinely enjoy sharing with you guys what i uh what i get up to and uh what i like playing with if you are enjoying the videos maybe think about giving us a thumbs up and a subscription cheers guys thanks for watching